Singapore will soon be able to produce personalized cancer treatment locally. Pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca intends to build a $2 billion facility to manufacture innovative medicine used in cancer treatments. Now, construction will start by the end of this year, and it should be operational by 2029. This marks the first manufacturing investment in Singapore for the Anglo-Swedish company. This is what the facility would look like. While the location of the new site, well, that hasn't been announced just yet, but AstraZeneca says that it will be the first end-to-end -end production site for such cancer treatment in the world. And this means that the production of compounds to the delivery of the finished drug could all be done by one manufacturer in Singapore. The announcement comes amid a slew of investments into Singapore's biopharmaceutical sector. The sector accounted for 2.3% of the nation's GDP in 2022. And one analyst says that the deal speaks to AstraZeneca's trust in Singapore's business environment as it pivots focus to Asian countries, including China, India, as well as Indonesia. With the EU's proposed changes to its pharma legislation, um, and a potential for big pharma companies look outside of Europe to set up their manufacturing plants and even their facilities for drug research and development. We expect Asia to be a key contender to attract these sorts of investments. And within Asia, I think Singapore is a key player which could stand to benefit. The Economic Development Board says that capabilities within the biomedical industry positions the nation well for economic opportunities like this. And this helps Singapore host activities that can create good and meaningful jobs. If the government is able to strike deals with big pharma companies in the US or even Europe uh, to uh, gain access to their data or to partner up with them for their precision medicine research, then I think it will be extremely beneficial for Singapore in the future. Let's get more on this from Pam Cheng. She is in New York for us. She is the Executive Vice President of Global Operations and Information Technology at AstraZeneca. Good evening to you, Ms. Cheng. Thank you for joining us, first of all. Can you help us understand why antibody drug conjugates, otherwise known as ADCs, are the next generation medicine for cancer treatment? Good evening, Dawn. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, antibody ADCs are actually the next generations of treatments because they deliver highly potent cancer killing medicines directly to the cancer cells um, through a targeted antibody. Now, unlike conventional chemotherapy, um, where it damages healthy cells as well, ADCs delivers chemotherapy agents directly to the cancer cells. Right, so the, there is less damage is what I hear you say in terms of what the ADCs can actually achieve. Uh, talk to us about the ADCs and what they cur the currently available ones uh, do, what they can and they ca cannot do. What are their limitations? Correct. So the current chemotherapy treatments, as mentioned, they kill cancer cells, but they also damage healthy cells. ADCs are a shift in paradigm where it delivers the chemotherapy medicines directly to the chemo to the cancer cells without damaging healthy cells, and that's the that's the the, the winning part. Right. So direct delivery of treatment, but can ADCs be useful perhaps to treat other diseases besides cancer, Ms. Chang? That's a great question, Don. Currently, a uh, majority of the focus on ADCs is on cancer treatment. However, scientists around the world are also exploring opportunities to be able to expand the use of ADCs beyond oncology as well. All right. The news of this facility uh, that we're expecting to, to become perhaps even operational by 2029, uh, it's of great interest. But can you give us perhaps more perspective about what the facility will be like and what it's going to mean specifically for the ecosystem of precision medicine, which is a, is a, already a quite a, a, a wide field here in Singapore. Absolutely. So ADC manufacturing is quite comprehensive and, and complex in nature. It starts with the production of antibody, then the synthesis of the drug and its linker, and then bringing the two together in a conjugation process, linking the drug linker to
to the antibody. And finally, the formulation and filling of the finished ADC substance. So this is quite a large scale complex manufacturing process. As you mentioned, we will uh, commence design and construction of this facility at the end of this year and targeting operational in 2029. So it's a two billion sing dollar facility. I mean, by way of investment into such, into such a sort of a supply chain, uh, give us some perspective about how competitive it will be in terms of other similar facilities, perhaps elsewhere. Will it be able to compete uh, and become a player in the global supply of ADCs? Absolutely, absolutely. This is, I, we believe this is first of its kind in terms of end-to-end -end ADC manufacturing facility, being able to manufacture this innovative medicine in one single facility. Um, this will be among the largest of manufacturing facility in our global manufacturing footprint, and we believe um, within the sector um, as well. So you anticipate that demand will, there'll be global demand for this Oh, absolutely. So AstraZeneca has a uh, broad portfolio of ADCs with six wholly owned ADCs in the clinic at the moment and with many more in the preclinic um, development stage. We also partner with other companies around the ADC development. So this Singapore facility will play critical roles in commercialization of these ADCs in our portfolio, and more importantly for patients around the world that will benefit from these ADC medicines. Is there an opportunity for perhaps the facility as well to collaborate with, within that ecosystem within Singapore? Do you anticipate that that might be a development that we'll be seeing as well? Absolutely. I mean, we chose Singapore because it's got one of the most established ecosystems around medicine development, commercialization and manufacturing. It's also got one of the most sort of highly technical, innovative, sustainable mindsets. And I think within that ecosystem, there's a lot more we can do, not only to pull through of our ADC pipeline, but also to collaborate with the Singapore government, with the ecosystem, to ensure that we bring further innovation to the market. Ms. Cheng, thank you very much for joining me this evening uh, to shed some light on uh, this new development and uh, what the facility uh, will be all about. Uh, Pam Cheng there, Executive Vice President at AstraZeneca, speaking to us all the way from New York.